Hello everyone, in this tutorial we'll be going over how to run an open foam case in parallel. Um, so open foam uses MPI to run uh, cases in parallel and uh, you can do this using the built-in open foam utilities. So here are the files for this tutorial. We have the open foam files, the decompose par dictionary which we'll copy into the open foam case files and uh, the mesh we'll be using just for this. Uh, it's a simple 2D uh, airfoil. So let's go ahead and make and convert the mesh. So this is G mesh, which I've used in many other videos. Uh, convert the mesh. And of course, modify the boundary file. Okay, and now, now run our decompose par, which is a standard open foam utility. So we go into the case, and uh, you can see that we can say we before we can we are able to use this command, we have to have a decompose par dict in the system directory. So here you can see this decompose par dict here. Um, so I have two different decompose par dicts. The one already in the case directory is a simple, uh, is a simplified one. So you here is here where you specify the number of processors you'll be using, and then the method of decomposition of splitting up the grids, uh, splitting up the grid among the processors, and then the coefficients needed for the specific method you've chosen. So these in this case are not used. Um, in order to use these coefficients, you would choose the hierarchical method. And so the one I've included on the outside of this in, is a pretty comprehensive version you can find in the standard tutorial uh, repository on, uh, uh, on GitHub. Uh, the, the, I mean the official open phone repository. And here they have commented out all of the different methods and as well as all of the coefficients some model coefficients you need for each of these methods. These are all pretty much heuristics, so you know if you choose any of them, they'll probably do well. Doesn't really matter too much. Um, it's more of a fine tuning thing. Okay, but uh, anyways, here we've chosen uh, four processors. Um, so now, since since that file is present in our system directory, we can run decompose par dict or decompose par. And you can see that this output tells you like how many cells are in, assigned to each processor and other information. So now you can see that as opposed to just the zero constant and system, we now have these four, one corresponding to each processor, zero, one, two, and three. And each of these has their own little copies of zero and constant. As you run the case in parallel, the solution will be stored decomposed in these folders rather than in a single time step folder as you would have in a serial case. So let's run it in parallel and this requires some additional commands. So MPI run sort of invokes the MPI environment and you have the number of processors as well as an argument and you can see that the application you're actually running is an argument to MPI run. So so you enter the application you're running, which is simple foam in our case, and you also have to specify for, for the simple foam application parallel. So the application is aware that you're running in parallel. If you don't put this parallel flag, uh, you will actually run four independent separate instances of simple foam. Uh, if you if you so so you, ha you have to denote that these processes are working together on this application. So let's give this a run. As you can see, it's running, uh, and it's actually much faster than a serial um, run. And it's already done, 500 iterations. And uh, now we can see that no new 
Time steps have been created in the main directory, however, all of them are in the distributed folders. So you can see uh, our latest time step here is stored here in all the previous histories for each processor and each partition. So um, in order to view it in pair of view, you need to recombine them into a single time step as per the standard format. So to do that, we say reconstruct par latest time. And as you can see, 500 was uh, created here. You can also specify a particular time that's not the latest time by time, for example, 100 for the 100th iteration. And here you can see it recreated. And now you can see that we can view the solution at time step 500 here. So uh, that's all there is to it. Uh, you can remove the processors, the processor distributed, and just leave yourself with the latest solution if you want. So that's all there is to it, to running OpenFoam in parallel. I uh, hope you guys learned something, and happy foaming.